Meanwhile, another night of protests expected tonight in Minneapolis as demonstrators demand justice for Dante Wright and business owners also preparing for that potential unrest as we approach a verdict in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. News Nation correspondent Tom Negevin joining us live from Minneapolis with a closer look at preparations underway. Tom. Right, Nicole. You know, by some estimates, the total amount of damage in the riots that followed the death of George Floyd last year, just in the Twin Cities area, upwards of half a billion dollars. So around here, they know how quickly protests can escalate, and they're getting ready. This is the serious hardware. A 10-foot-tall chain-link fence embedded in concrete going up today around the main post office in downtown Minneapolis, an area that looks a bit like an armed camp these days, watched over by police and the National Guard. We're all on edge. We're tired. We're all small business owners, and we just are all trying to make a living. But for now, they're boarding up. We can either cover the windows over or replace them all. Locals thought they'd seen it all. A pandemic, months of looting and rioting that followed the death of George Floyd. And then, just as they started to breathe a bit more easily, a young black man named Dante Wright shot and killed by police just 10 miles from the courtroom where former officer Derek Chauvin's on trial for Floyd's death. It started all over again. Everybody was waiting until the Chauvin trial was over, and hopefully it was an outcome that everybody wanted. And now that there's so much looting and damage to people's property, they're just on edge that it's going to happen sooner than later. This is what they remember all too well. Minneapolis burning not one year ago. The state's governor hasn't forgotten, promising he won't allow it to happen again. We have to have change. This, this cannot be allowed to happen, but we also witnessed last May that there are those that will exploit tragedy. And uh, we didn't have the luxury of being able to plan ahead and simply making sure that that doesn't happen. We cannot allow our city to burn. That might have been difficult to hear, but Governor Walz just said we cannot allow our city to burn. A lot of preparations going on around here. And as of right now, the latest data we have tells us that about 140 businesses suffered some damage or loss in the unrest that's happened just since this past Sunday. We don't have a dollar value to put on that just yet, but we're being told it's not enough, not so far, to seek any kind of federal aid. Live in Minneapolis, Tom Negevin, News Nation.